Hello and welcome into the ONTV Fantasy League recapping week one. We got Drake Eubanks and Joe Hollywood Johnson in our first episode of our recaps. And uh, how did week one go for you guys? Did you watch a lot of football? Uh, how'd it go? My tradition on Sunday is uh, grab some uh, sandwiches, snacks, drinks, dessert. And I plop down in front of the TV and watch uh, the Red Zone all day long. I should hire a nurse to come and like roll me around so I don't get bed sores because I barely move the entire day. Um, but when I get a week one win, I am happy for uh, the next uh, several days. So uh, this week one was very good to me. And Drake. How was your experience being a first-time fantasy footballer? That's why you came on today's episode because, you know, fantasy football has been around for a long time, but, you know, it's still gaining traction. There's still new people trying it every year. Uh, How has your experience been so far? Um, It's been a lot of fun. I can't say that I watch as much uh, pro football as Joe. I was off by a day and watched a lot of college football on Saturday and uh, watched so much college football I forgot to watch pro on uh sunday so yeah <laughs> um but yeah it's been a lot of fun um i i had a feeling i i kind of had a feeling that tracy was going to beat me even though i was projected to win mm-hmm. uh i feel like that just ends up happening a lot well, just, you you ran into one major obstacle i was talking to tracy yeah. earlier today <laughs> And she had the Dallas Cowboys defense. <laughs> if it wasn't for the Dallas Cowboys defense, yeah. you probably would have got a win. But uh, there is no over overcoming that. Yeah. And they had a, they had basically a, a historic uh, finish, and that's they got one of the highest defensive scores of all time in fantasy football. So wow. you can't feel you can't feel too bad. That's just, that's just <laughs> the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. Um, so right away, we're gonna get right into it with some of our recaps. And we're going to recap with uh, the highest scoring team. And maybe you'll notice what happens. But um, I had to go against that team. And that team is Ian Witherspoon's team. Scored 136 points on the day. And uh, on the other side, your commissioner, the humongous Melonheads, (laughs) uh, sitting there with a 107.88. So uh, it was a it was a rough day for me, but you're not going to win too many games when your quarterback scores three points. <laughs> um, you know the this league nowadays you live and die by the quarterback, and uh, when Joe Burrow puts up three points, it's a bad day, and I I didn't expect anything out of the rest of the day. Yeah, it was a very odd performance by most of the uh, quarterbacks in the NFL. Some people say that the shortened preseason might have had something to do with it. Uh, some quarterbacks barely took any snaps at all. Yeah. Uh, you know, Burrow signs this huge new contract and comes out and puts up a dud. Uh, I don't know what the reason is, but, uh, you know, I wouldn't quit on these quarterbacks just yet. It's week one. But, uh, wow, yeah, what a disappointing week one for many, many quarterbacks across the league. Yeah, I I will say some of the top quarterbacks throughout the NFL had very bad weeks. Yeah, Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes did okay, but it's still pedestrian for Patrick Mahomes. I guess the Lions, like I was expecting a shootout. Yep. And, uh, you know, he gave me some numbers, but, uh, you know, I was expecting four touchdowns, 300 yards. Yeah. Uh, You'll see Jalen Hurts, Lamar Jackson. All right around 10 points, which is not what you want. Um, in this game, though, uh, Ian's team was just all around much better. Uh, he got 20 points from Justin Herbert, uh, about 20 points from Amon Ross St. Brown, Devonta Smith, Austin Eckler, Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones had a big game. That kind of, uh, when those touchdowns happened, that basically told me that my, my week was done. Yep. <laughs> he, uh, he had some big runs. He did get hurt, but it was after the touchdowns. Um, I guess the good news for my team is that Calvin Ridley scored a lot of points. He looks healthy, and he looks like he left off right where he was two years ago. He looked angry. Like, he played angry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Some of my other players that I played uh, did not do so well. Rashad White with uh, seven points. Isaiah Likely. uh, He was my last-minute fill-in for Mark Andrews when they ruled him out. And uh, Jahan Dotson, I thought, was going to have a much better day against a bad Arizona defense. But Arizona came to play. And uh, 
it was unfortunate. Um, I did have a couple bench guys do all right. So looking forward, I think um, I'll be all right. But I got to make some moves. Got some injuries to deal with. So uh, good good win to Ian's team. He's going to be a, a scary one if he can keep that up. Now you had, uh, what, the second pick in the draft? Yes. And Ian had the third, if I remember correctly? Um, he ha- no, he had the, the fourth? fourth. Yeah, because I was out of order. So he had the fourth pick. He went with Austin Eckler. Yeah, you know, that's one thing I observed watching football on Sunday <clears throat> is that a lot of the high draft picks lived up to expectations, especially, you know, when people are saying that this is a passing league now and you want to build your team around wide receivers, that a lot of the running backs who went high mm-hmm. did really, really well. So yeah. the era of the running back isn't quite dead yet. Yeah, and and Ian and I both had the two top running backs, McCaffrey and Austin Eckler, in the draft. So both of them did exactly what they were supposed to. Um, Ian just got a better all-around effort from the rest of his team. Uh, okay, moving on to the next game. We have, uh, funny enough, Malik's last place team taking on Becky and the halftime Honeybees. Now, Becky had, I would say, the the winner of the week. She sure did. Uh, Tyreek Hill won a lot of games for a lot of people across fantasy. Uh, he had 44.5 points, 215 receptions, or receiving yards with uh, two touchdowns and 11 receptions. And she got she had one of those quarterbacks that didn't do much. Same with Malik. So the quarterback, again... We just don't see much, which is which is wild. Uh, Malik had uh, Josh Allen and the New York Jets defense going on Monday night, so there was a very, very outside chance of him catching Becky. Uh, but Josh Allen just did not look good. And uh, so it, this is another point where we just talked about two, uh, a lot of the early draft picks working out. Jamar Chase did not because he was attached to my quarterback, Joe Burrow. Yeah. The, against the Browns, uh, it was a pretty shocking result. Uh, talking about Allen, you know, I was invited to do a DraftKings uh, uh, pool for uh, Monday, just the Monday night game. Mm-hmm. And as I was trying to put together my team, obviously you want to start a quarterback. And I looked at Allen, and, and I, I, I remember thinking, I see maybe three, four picks coming. <laughs> and yep. he had a lot of turnovers. Mm-hmm. So who did I play instead? Rodgers. Oh, <laughs> who uh, was knocked out of the game four plays into it. So yes. I did not have a very good night. But Allen worries me, and that's why I stayed away from him in the draft. You know, he's he's a very exciting, dynamic quarterback, but he is turnover prone. Yeah, he's somebody that I would have targeted um, if he had maybe gotten to the right spot. Um, I believe Malik took him just before I picked, um, and I was thinking about it, but... Uh, yeah, that's what you're going to get with Josh Allen. He's he's kind of that Brett Favre type where some days he'll win you a week because of how much he throws and how electric he can be. But uh, sometimes when he's he's forcing it, he's definitely going to get some turnovers and that can uh, also kind of lose you a week, which maybe we saw this week. Um, you but, know, uh, if, if Becky – well, Becky had an opportunity, the uh, halftime honeybees, uh, to really pad that lead because sitting on her bench is a quarterback named Tua, and she could have gotten that uh, Tyreek Hill Tua hookup and would have just just gone off. Now, yeah. she still came away with the win, but I have a feeling come next week she might start playing that Tua Hill uh, stack. Yeah, uh, That could be a potential uh, for major points and possibly a league winner. Yeah, and I think that's something, you know, it's funny we've talked about before in the past is that when you have two good quarterbacks, it's hard to pick which one to play. Yeah. Um, now, I would agree you might want to lean with the stack just because of that scenario, but it's hard to bench Lamar Jackson. I know he didn't play yeah. very well in week one, but he's just one, he's another one of those players that sometimes he can win you weeks. Yeah, I agree. You want you want a stud quarterback that you can just plug and play and not worry about. I hate analyzing week after week, looking at matchups, trying to figure out which quarterback to start. And I, I didn't intend to put myself in that position when I drafted, but it looks like I might have a quarterback dilemma on my team because I, I drafted Mahomes fairly early in the draft to be my starting quarterback. 
And then late in the draft, as a backup, I picked up Brock Purdy, <laughs> who looked fantastic on Sunday. So yeah. I, I may have a little quarterback dilemma of my own. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, final thoughts on these teams. I think, uh, I think Malik, he'll be just fine. A lot of his team underperformed. His top three picks, I believe, Josh Allen, Jamar Chase, and CeeDee Lamb, did not have great games, all for different reasons. Um, so I think he'll be, he'll be fine moving forward as well. And uh, if Tyreek Hill <laughs> keeps doing this, Becky's going to be very, very difficult to beat. Yeah. All right, Drake. The oh, Wasteland no. Wanderers. <laughs> Here's the analytics. Oh, no. Playing against Tracy's team. And this, this was a really good matchup for two uh, new players to fantasy football. Um, maybe unfortunate how it ended. Uh, but throughout the entire weekend, your guys' game was close. Both of your quarterbacks had similar games. Justin Jefferson, the number one pick, did exactly what you needed him to do. Um, unfortunately, you lost J.K. Dobbins. Uh, he'll be out for the season with an Achilles tear. And um, we talked about it at the beginning. Uh, Tracy had one of the best <laughs> defensive performances that we've almost ever seen in fantasy football. Yeah. The Dallas Cowboys putting up 37 with the shutout against the Giants on Sunday night football. Um, she also got huge contributions uh, from Brandon Ayuk, which you know relates to Joe saying how good of Brock Purdy uh, did this past weekend. Um, the one thing that I'll point out is that Brandon Ayuk is one of those players that a lot of analytics have shown. He is kind of the guy that when defenses play a certain way, he steps up, and when the defense plays the other way, that Debo Samuel takes over. And I can't remember if it's zone or man of which one is which. Um, but either way, one of them always seems to step up. And Brock Purdy, if he keeps playing like this, Brandon Ayuk could be a breakout player this year. Yeah, and, and Ayuk seems to be more of a pure wide receiver where Debo is used in a lot of different roles. You know, he sometimes he's in the backfield, you know, that sort of thing. So mm -hmm. I, I think from week to week, it's going to be whoever is the hot hand. Um, looking at the recap here uh, on the screen, a weird phenomenon in this particular matchup is both teams got zero points from players. Yeah. And now was London on the field? Is there, a, he was, is there a reason why he got uh, zero? Arthur, Arthur Smith has basically come out and says he hates fantasy football. Um, Arthur Smith, head coach of the Atlanta Falcons has said, they don't care about your fantasy teams. They're going to play the way that they play and they play to run the ball. Which doesn't make any sense because they drafted receivers in the previous two drafts to Bijan Robinson getting uh, Kyle Pitts and Drake London. Drake London finished with one target, zero catches, zero yards. And the same thing with Higgins. Like he was healthy, right? And yes, he was playing. He, I think, I can't remember how many targets he got. He got, oh, he got eight targets. Eight targets, no not catches. A single catch. And Oops, that just shows you. Fault there. I think a lot of it played into the weather. It was a rainy, sloppy game. Um, and again, as I said, Joe Burrow did not play very well, so that's going to make it even harder. Uh, I didn't watch a whole lot of that game closely, but yeah, it's it's wild to see uh, two guys that put up zeros. I'm looking at benches here. Tracy was uh, lamenting her bench. Uh, Watts, yeah, her, did her quarterback. Yeah, Watson, Watson. outscored Goff. All weekend. right, so she was regretting that. Um, and TJ Hawkinson was Hawkinson. on her bench. Yeah. She played the Dallas tight end. So, yeah, Drake, Um, I don't know. You're going to obviously have to make a roster change because your Dobbins, you're just going to have to flat out drop. Yeah. Uh, so you're going to have to hit the waiver wire, find a replacement. There's a couple of good names we'll talk about a little bit yep. later. But uh, just make some tweaks and uh, go into week two. Something I was thinking about. Uh, and this might be a little controversial, but I'm thinking about switching Justin Fields out soonish for C.J. Stroud. Ooh. Hmm. I watched a, I watched a lot of college football last year, <laughs> and I uh, I saw C.J. Stroud um, come through for his team a lot, and I think he's a really good player. And I think once he once he gets into his groove, I think he's going to be putting a lot of points on the board. I think the biggest thing that your team needs is their team owner to appreciate them a little bit more you <laughs> gotta wa start watching a little more sunday football <laughs> yeah you're not supporting your team you sorry they're feeling there. it cheer I, them on i don't have cable <laughs> you know, i i watch the red zone on uh youtube tv 
So that's how I would get yeah. my fix. You can always just watch uh, the Statcast on ESPN, or at least keep up with it. Yeah, just go on the ESPN app, check out some stuff, see see how things are going. I, I may have to just drag my wife along to B Dubs on Sunday. Yeah, there you go. That's oh. always a fun outing every once in a while. Yeah, sure. Okay, moving on to the next matchup. We had the Green Buckeye, Sammy Taramina, who had the best draft in the world, according to him, um, <laughs> taking on my brother. And uh, my brother got a goose egg from Aaron Rodgers as his quarterback because he only played four snaps. Well, that's where luck overrides skill. You can't predict something like that's going to happen. Yeah. Even though I wouldn't have touched Rodgers with a 10 foot pole, but, mm -hmm. and you can't, you just can't predict that. But when your quarterback goes down early with zero points, you're, you're done. Yeah. You're toast. But not in this case. <laughs> not in this case. Um, oh, yeah. Now that you mentioned it. Yeah. That's what, I, that's the whole point. Wow. Um, so Stefan Diggs came up huge for Jordan in uh, Monday Night Football. He came up huge for me in some other leagues as well. Um, but another kind of, Solid all-around performance from Jordan's team besides his quarterback, Chris Olave, had about 20 points. Um, like I said, Diggs got 26. Waddle had a little bit left to be desired. Nick Chubb kind of did exactly what Nick Chubb does, gets yeah, 100 yards. <laughs> just kind of consistent, yeah. you know, production, nothing nothing earth-shattering, but right. just consistent. Yeah. Um, and then on the other side, Sammy, you know, we kind of joked with him going with a, a full Eagles squad, basically. Um, and this week, it, it just didn't work out. Jalen Hurts and A.J. Brown didn't weren't the hookup that you were expecting for them. They did solid overall, but uh, they didn't have to run. They didn't have to throw the ball all too often. New England's defense was also a little bit better than I think people expected. Uh, so I'm looking at his bench. Pittman had a, a pretty nice game. Uh, I'd be tempted to put him into the starting lineup. Uh, he was uh, he was also a victim of a big goose egg from uh, tight end Goddard. Let's talk about tight ends this week. <laughs> this is it was like a tight end curse in week one. Not only did two of the top tight end stars in the league not play, they didn't get the start, but there were several tight ends who put up zeros who who didn't produce. Yeah, and it's it it. Gives me ammunition for my argument that uh, I don't think we should be forced to start tight ends <laughs> in fantasy football because they just don't seem to be putting up those numbers unless you have the top tier tight ends. And when those top tier tight ends don't start in week one, uh, I think the top scoring tight end put up maybe 14 points or something. That's it was yeah. just a really weird week for tight ends in week yeah. one. And I believe the top scoring tight end is on waivers. <laughs> Yeah. I think it was Hayden Hurst is the best tight end. Wow, so for the weekend. not even on a team. Well, yeah. it it kind of depends on the team's play style too, right? Yeah, it, it does a bit. Um, it's just it's just one of those things in fantasy football. If you don't have the top guys, usually you're kind of just hoping for a shot in the dark for one of them to get a touchdown, and that's just kind of the nature of the game. Yeah, I think to shake things up, uh, we should do a point per block <laughs> oh, for tight ends. George Kittle might be the best tight end at that point. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, Sammy's team, I think they're still a good team. Uh, Jordan, obviously, he doesn't have a backup quarterback, so he's going to have to find a quarterback um, on the waivers. And uh, Sammy, I think I think he'll be able to bounce back. I think his team overall is, is pretty good. Yeah. And to the final matchup, we have my wife, the Dak Knight Rises, <laughs> taking on Joe, the Hollywood block blockbusters. The team with the lowest score to get a win. Yeah, this was kind of the, the ugly slug match. <laughs> um, it's embarrassing not to crack 100 points, and I was yeah. lucky to get a win. Mm -hmm. um, pretty mediocre production from my entire roster. Like we said earlier, Mahomes, you know, he gave me two TDs, but he had that turnover. Right. Um, didn't crack 300 yards against the Lions. The, the Lions defense looked pretty impressive. So didn't even get 20 points from Mahomes. Um, Bijan Robinson was my uh, top starter. Mm -hmm. And imagine the game he could have had if, uh, if uh, uh, what's his name? The other. Tyler back, Algier. Uh, I, Algier poached two touchdowns. Yeah, and he's Robinson. on your bench. <laughs> yeah, so here's my dilemma. Like, do I start two Falcons running backs 
Or Ugh. do I try to trade one away or keep one as insurance? Yeah. I don't know. I, 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 think, I don't know who I would drop to start Algier, but yeah. Algier sure looked impressive. And he came on strong at the end of uh, the, his rookie season. Yeah. And now is carrying over into year two. So yeah. uh, Algier and Robinson are a lethal one-two punch. And I got to figure yeah. out how I'm going to play these guys. Yeah, I think you might have to actually strongly consider it. Normally, I, I would hate that idea. Um, but the way the Falcons run the ball, the, the way they play, it might just work out. Um, it might not always be pretty for Algier because I think he's going to be a little more touchdown dependent. Um, but he got more touches than the rookie, and Bijan was all the hype in the offseason. So yeah. you, you might be forced to play both of them. Uh, if, if we're uh, talking studs and duds, um, Probably number one in the duds category has got to be uh, Chiefs wide receivers. They looked yeah. absolutely awful. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much credit the Lions get for how badly uh, the Chiefs receivers played, but uh, I was hoping for the quarterback wide receiver hookup playing Mahomes and Moore, and Moore gave me .40 points. Uh, yeah. So what a disappointment, and uh, I'm hoping they're running laps this week and yeah. trying to correct the mistakes. Yeah. On Marie's side, she was kind of uh, the victim of the Cowboys blowing out the Giants. So Dak Prescott never had to do anything. He only had six points. And then the Seahawks just looked flat. So DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, they just didn't do much. Well, uh, that's always a risk, too, when you start two wide receivers yeah. from the same team. Mm -hmm. You know, you might get lucky and one has the big game and the other one gets you single digits. So right. it is risky starting two yeah. from the same team. And then her running backs... Alexander Madison got a touchdown. Derrick Henry did not get in the end zone, which hurt him uh, on the weekend. But uh, overall, again, I think a lot of teams will bounce back in week two. Uh, week one, it's it's hard to take much away. Plus, of course, she's missing Travis Kelsey. So, Oh, when Kelsey comes back, it's going to be a different story. And I'm kind of glad I, I got to face <laughs> her but without Kelsey because, uh, yeah, he's going to be a points producer when he comes back. Right. Um, I'm looking at the rest of her bench. Um Cousins outplayed Prescott, yep. even though he threw a pick and had two fumbles. Yep. He threw for um, enough yards, threw some touchdowns. Yeah. Uh, and then Sutton uh, for Denver had 13 points. So mm -hmm. uh, looking at my bench, like I said, do I try to figure out how to get Algier into my starting lineup? He was, he was, I think, my top scorer in my entire squad. <laughs> um, and I had a couple other uh, double-digit points producers Addison I had on my bench uh he caught a touchdown he looked pretty good um again talk about your lethal combinations uh Addison and Jefferson on the field at the same time mm -hmm. uh if if uh if Cousins can you know negate those turnovers the Vikings look impressive but uh he yeah. had his three turnovers Cousins three turnovers is what cost the Vikings that game right yeah and their their defense might be a little suspect at times, so we'll we'll have to wait and see. Um, another thing I wanted to point out really quickly now that we've uh, recapped all the matchups for the week, um, now we're into the first waiver wire period, and we have two new players to understand the waiver wire because it's not as it, it's pretty straightforward for the most part, but the idea of it is a little odd. Uh, Drake, do you under do you know what the waiver wire is? How that works? Or I have anything? no idea, man. Okay. So, if you go to the players under Yahoo Sports, which I have pulled up and it's on the screen right now, okay, uh, it shows all of the top players from the previous week. So, if you see, uh, Jacoby Myers was the, was the highest scoring available player with 29 points uh, for Las Vegas. He had nine receptions for 81 yards and two touchdowns. Um, so, throughout this list, you can go and you can click on the plus button. And if you click on the plus button, you can try to add that player. Now, the way that the waiver process works in this league, I made it in reverse standings order because I think that's typically the most fair. So whoever is at the bottom, whoever scored the least amount of points, so Marie has actually the highest waiver priority. So if she picks up somebody, she will automatically get that person because she has the highest priority because she was the lowest scoring, lowest standing player. Then, it, so if two people wanted the same person, the person that is the lower standing player would get him. Um, so you kind of have to be a little bit strategic if you're looking for one of the top options. Now, the other thing you can do, waivers will run uh, tomorrow morning, early in the morning. So you have to put in your claim before then. Okay. Uh, so usually people do it on Tuesday night. If you don't, 
all the players become free agents. And then it's just an open open season to whoever picks up the player the quickest after waivers have run. Uh, does that make sense? Yes, I think so. I'm I'm so I have the second least amount of points, so do I get yeah, so so pick. if if you pick up somebody or you try to add somebody, then you also have to pick somebody to drop. So typically somebody that didn't perform well. Okay. Um, and then the only way that you would lose that player is if Marie also wanted to add that player. Gotcha. But, uh, yeah. So there's always options to be able to change your team if you didn't like a performance that somebody did. Maybe Joe wants to get rid of Sky Moore after he failed miserably <laughs> on Thursday night. Um, Joe, do you have anything else to add to the waiver wire of? Anything? No, just, uh, you know, keep your eye on uh, players that excel and uh, see if uh, they're on the waiver wire. And if they are, that's the only way you can improve your team is, is uh, you know, because you, if you score the least amount of points, the only way you're going to get better is to add players that are on the waiver wire to your roster to try and get better. So just sort of keep an eye on who does what. I don't know if you want to discuss any individual players that are available on the waiver wire. I'm, I'm almost afraid to, you know, say I, who I'm interested in. I can do it because I don't think I'm going to add anybody this week. Yeah. I might wait till waivers are over. Um, so if you're looking for a wide receiver, I definitely think Jacoby Myers, like I mentioned, he is the top scoring guy from last week. I think he's one to look out for. They tend to like uh, using a second receiver. We've seen Hunter Renfro in the past. Jacoby Myers is maybe a little bit uh, more of an outside receiver, so he'll maybe see some more touchdowns than Renfro has in the past. Um, and anytime you're opposite an elite receiver, you're going to have the lesser cornerback on you. So that's always a good option. I think Jacoby Myers could be a good pickup. I think Vegas is going to be down in a lot of games. They're going to have to throw the ball a little bit more. Um, Kendrick Bourne for New England, he might be the number one receiver in New England. Mm. Um, and then Puka Nakua, he's kind of the the name to watch out for lately because yeah. he, threw, he got a ton of targets from Matthew Stafford. Um, the only thing that I would be concerned about is that Cooper cup may return at some point And we don't it, until we get more clarity on that. I'm not willing to really push for him, even though he had a really good week one. I was going to say one of the more uh, pleasant surprises in week one was the performance of the Rams and Matt Stafford. Mm -hmm. I think on draft day, a lot of people were down on Stafford and the Rams in general, and uh, a lot of their players went undrafted mm -hmm. and all of a sudden I'm, I'm seeing these highlights coming out of LA and Stafford looked good. He looked healthy. He's hitting receivers that I didn't even know who they were. And uh, I'm like, Oh man, the Rams are looking pretty impressive. Now what's interesting about having Cooper cup on, on IR uh, or is he on, he's on IR yes. right now, right? Yep. The interesting thing about him being on IR is that now Stafford has the time to develop a rapport with some of his other receivers. Mm -hmm. It seemed like that first year that Stafford was with the Rams, Cooper Cup was sort of a crutch, yeah. and he just kept hitting him over and over and over, and, it, and Cup posted huge numbers because of it. But yeah. if Stafford develops a rapport with some of his other receivers, like Van Jefferson and stuff, uh, Rams might be a team to watch. And uh, if a lot of their players are on the waiver wire right now, they're, I think they're going to get targeted this week. Yeah. Um, you might be able to also get the their top running back, Kyron Williams. Uh, a lot of people thought Cam Akers was going to take over the backfield, but I can't. Kyron Williams got a lot of looks, he and sure he got the touchdowns, and um, he he might be the lead back there. So it's it's hard to get a lead back off of the waiver wire. So he would be one to watch out for if you need a running back. I would also maybe suggest Joshua Kelly. Uh, Austin Eckler is banged up with an ankle injury. We don't know the yeah. severity. Um, but if he goes down, Josh Kelly looked really good in his place. Another name that comes to mind is uh, Justice Hill. Um, yeah. He had a, a nice game, and uh, I know he's a free agent in my other league. I haven't checked the free agent list. Yeah, I, I believe but, he is. So, yeah, those are some names to target, and mm -hmm. uh, I may put in a couple, but. Yeah, it's all about, you know, that's what makes fantasy football fun is, is not just putting in your lineup and sitting back and relaxing. I like tweaking it. I like massaging it. I like studying it and overanalyzing it from week to week. That's what makes fantasy football fun for me. And I love hitting the waiver wire. And we haven't even touched on the possibility of trades. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, like I said, I may have a quarterback dilemma, not knowing which quarterback to start from week to week. There's a good possibility. I could put up one of my quarterbacks in a trade for someone who needs a quarterback Mm -hmm. like a certain show host brother. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) so, so yeah, um, trades are fun too. That always makes things really exciting. Yeah. Um, we're running out of time. We're actually over time, but it's fine. Um, the, I wanted to really quickly look forward to next week and some of the matchups that we have. Um, my matchup next week is actually against <laughs> said brother. Sibling uh, rivalry. So that will always be a fun one. Um, it's going to be weird because I, in my other leagues, I also have Stefan Diggs and Ramondre Stevenson. So that's always a, a struggle when you're in multiple leagues of having the same players. Um, but I, I think right now I'm the favorite, but he doesn't have a quarterback. So... I, th- I think that's up in the air. Uh, the next matchup that we have that I was going to look at, uh, is this? Oh, this did not forward. Malik is playing Marie, which is also kind of a rivalry matchup. Uh, they like to trash talk each other a lot. <laughs> and uh, Malik is favored in that matchup, 121 to 114. And then for the next matchup, uh, Tracy is taking on Becky and the halftime honeybees. So that's a battle of two one and O teams, which will be the first one that we have actually of <laughs> technically undefeated teams. All right. Uh, the so, game of the week. Yeah. So somebody will get knocked out there. Uh, Tracy is projected for one Oh six and Becky is one thirteen at the moment. Then, Ooh, Sammy taking on Joe. <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking at his lineup right now. I'm, I'm trying to see if there's anybody on there that really scares me. Uh, let's see. Wide receiver, Philadelphia wide receiver Brown is projected to score 17. Barkley is always a threat. A lot of people are down on Najee Harris right now. They say he underperformed in week one and might not be the guy there. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. There's nobody on his team that really terrifies me just yet yeah uh i'll make some tweaks to my roster who's uh mahomes is projected at 22 yep so him and hurts are going to be about the same but we'll know early on because uh jalen hurts and aj brown are playing on the thursday night game so you'll get to see a good amount of sammy's team before we even get into the weekend yeah, you know what? Someone, I think it was on TikTok, I saw someone give some advice, and I thought this was really interesting, that you want to be careful starting a player just because they're playing on Thursday night football because if they underperform on Thursday night football, you're kind of stuck where if something were to happen to a player prior to kickoff on Sunday, um, you have – that uh, flex spot where you have some flexibility where you can start a different player. And I, mm-hmm. I thought, wow, that makes a lot of sense. So, I mean, obviously you want to start your studs, but don't start a player just because they're on Thursday night football. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That it happened it, to me <laughs> starting my chiefs players. There's kind of a weird strategical thing to your flex position and all that. Yeah. Um, and then finally Drake, you're playing Ian, the top scorer of the week Ooh, last no, week. Man. Uh oh. Gotta make some changes. Right David now the, and Goliath. I mean, right now the projection is very close. Um, like I said, I think I think your team just underperformed a little bit, but uh Justin Jefferson also playing on Thursday night is always a scare for an opposing team to go up against because you never know what he's gonna do. Um, how are you feeling going into this uh this week two matchup? Not confident. Not <laughs> confident at all. Uh, I definitely have to make some changes and do some some more research before. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm ready to start smack talking <laughs> Ian. So now the good news for you is both his running backs, Austin Eckler and Aaron Jones, are a little banged up. We don't know, you know, how the practice week is going to go, um, but that is always a scary thing seeing your your players come up on the injury report anytime during the week and with. Ian having two of his best players there, he may have to be be wary. All righty, that's uh, that's all the week two matchups. Um, anybody have anything to add before we uh, we close up here? Yeah, I would just say you know 
people shouldn't make any rash decisions based on week one performances. Um, you know, they're not playing a lot of the starters in the preseason. So a lot of them are coming out sluggish, not necessarily in game shape. We're seeing a lot of hamstring injuries and things like that. Um, once these players start getting some, some games under their belts, uh, that's when we're going to see the cream rise to the top. And, uh, that's when you should start making decisions on trades and drops and things like that. Don't abandon, you know, chiefs receivers yet, or, you know, Jamar chase, right. They'll be okay. I'm not benching Joe Burrow this week because he played in the rain in Cleveland and got smacked around. Yeah. Now, if, if he gives you a couple of performances like that in a row, then you start to panic, but yeah. Don't make any rash decisions based on week one results. Yeah. You don't necessarily have to start CJ Stroud because you watched him in college. <laughs> <laughs> I got to I don't, I don't know. You know what though? You got to do what makes fantasy football fun for you. Yes, uh, I like, I like drafting players that I like on and off the field. I stay away from players who have personal issues off the field. <laughs> uh, so I draft players. I like, I start players. I like, and that makes fantasy football fun for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I think that's that's the uh, the most important part of it is that it's just it's fun, and it gives you a reason to watch games on Sunday or keep track, smack talk your friends, and uh, I like especially for me when I lost last week. Now I just want to win so much more. Yeah. So hopefully uh, we can continue to do this and have fun, and maybe we'll get somebody uh, new rotated in next week to talk about their team. Uh, see how it goes. But, uh, Drake, thank you for joining us, being a, a, a newbie to fantasy football. Thank you for uh, inviting me on this. And uh, we'll, keep, uh, we'll keep helping you out throughout the, throughout the season. I'm, I'm going to need a lot of help. So, uh, <laughs> If uh, Sammy is listening, I'm coming for you, my friend. <laughs> I'm going to send this out in an email to everybody <laughs> so that everybody can see it. And Sammy, you are the target of many people <laughs> after your draft day smack talk. All righty, this has been week one recap of the ONTV Fantasy Football League, and uh, we will see you guys next week for week two recap. All right, good luck.